Rain or shine, it's here to make you laugh. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. And now your host, Kyle Ruff. Anyways, welcome to the Steamboat Comedy Podcast, everybody. This is your host yet again, Kyle Ruff. Joining me to my right is Jared Morrill. Say hello. What's going on, guys? Joining me to my left is the man, the myth, the legend, the Miles. No, let me say it again. The Styles Manchez. Either is, either is acceptable. But hi. hi, everybody. And special guest coming back to the Steamboat Comedy Podcast is Mr. Pat Truer. Say hello. Hey, Steamboat. Happy to be back. Heck yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me, fellas. Of course, our pleasure. And you're uh, uh, here for an extended period of time this time. I am. I am. I got out of Chicago. We escaped right before everything <laughs> fell apart. So <laughs> I feel like I should have an eye patch and long hair like Kurt Russell, like the make the trilogy of Escape from the Major Cities. <laughs> yeah. We realized, uh, the, the missus and I realized that we had an opportunity to come home. You know, I'm born and raised here in Colorado. I've been in Chicago for the past four years. Mm-hmm. I went there for comedy, and we had this unique opportunity to come home. And so we did. And so the original plan was just to come out here and try and just do month by month. But within an hour of driving over the border, the missus said, well, could we just stay here? And she's from Illinois. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan. And now we're trying to figure out how to make that happen so we can stay at least in the mountains for the entire summer. Nice. And maybe rotate back and forth between Denver. I don't know, kind of figuring it out. There's a lot going on right now, obviously. Sure. <laughs> it's a bit of an understatement. but <laughs> Yeah, the world in a whole league of disarray yeah Yeah, but for me it's a lot of my focus right now is putting on fundraising shows for some good causes that are doing some good things right now we've got a fundraiser on friday for with instagram live for lakeview pantry which is a food pantry in chicago and then another one on saturday for the aclu uh, which is a terrific organization which i think does a lot of good not only for current issues going on right now but also uh, lends itself well to create an amazing world to live in the united states to do comedy that is true Hell yeah. yes if there's one organization that will stand up for you know something that's very important for comedians which is free speech the aclu is historically the people to go to you know so that's great Glad yeah you're supporting them yeah so that's it so i'm excited i gotta say i'm uh, i have no problem saying i'm super excited to be out of chicago <laughs> <laughs> it's why you you live there and everyone that lives there is from there is like this is the greatest city in the world and you ask them what other cities have you been to and they're like ah milwaukee right it's like (laughs) it's got a little on milwaukee yeah Yeah. (laughs) but uh you know it's a miserable place right it sounds a lot like the south where they're like it's south is the greatest it's like well have you been anywhere else like well i went to new orleans that one time right yeah (laughs) it's like yeah you you went there but anywhere else from from the south to the weird south yeah, you like you, <laughs> Louisiana. Rednecks to Cajun rednecks. It's, you know. Yeah. The whole redneck spectrum. Whole redneck spectrum. So then many you, shades of red. Yeah, well, oh, then you get to hillbilly, you know, and then, <laughs> you know, that that's what you call your rednecks that are up in, like, the mountain countries and, like, the Carolinas. Right. You know? But, yeah, no. Like, I get what you're saying, though. Get, get out. Get out of your hometowns, everybody, and yeah, go somewhere you gotta else. Yeah, get out. Well, I mean, a lot of people would say it's the greatest city. We're also the ones who left the city as soon as lockdown hit, so... Right, it's uh, not a strong leg to stand on. I'm I'm happy to be out here, and I'm happy to be in Steamboat right now. I can. We're happy to have you, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that uh, we've been hanging out since you got here and trying to get on some hikes. You've been out getting uh, in the nature with the lady, haven't you? Oh yeah, we go for a hike every morning. It's fantastic. We wake up four thirty. We pick a new hike, and then four thirty. Four thirty. Yeah, we get to bed early. It's th- oh, it's a great schedule because now the virtual shows I'm putting on are no later than seven o'clock. Oh, fair enough. So okay. a lot of happy hour or afternoon shows for employees, which it's just essentially like I know the world is a disaster right now, but I got to say it's pretty sweet for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out. I, I am doing comedy, uh, making a living doing it while in Steamboat Springs. I'm hiking every day. This is my dream life. This is uh, the best, the absolute best. And hopefully we get something going here. Yeah, well, that's the plan. I, things are starting to open up here in Steamboat. And we're trying to figure out um, potential places maybe for an outdoor show. We also already are kind of in talks for once things open up. I think I already told you guys the Chief Theater has been on the radar mm-hmm. actually reached out to us. So 
things are happening, or at least are uh, in the the planning stages. But yeah, the the next step, and we've kind of talked briefly. I'd really like to put together some kind of an outdoor show. Um, but there's still, even with that, there's some strings attached and some complications. Like what? Well, um, they still don't want too many people too close together in the same spot, or at least that's the gist I'm getting. Uh, and finding like, um, I mean, we could go to like a public park or something, but finding a venue to host it. There's a lot of things are kind of cramped together in like the small downtown area. There's not a lot of places that have a lot of outdoor seating things like that uh on, on that note though like the town is actually trying to accommodate that for the, a lot of these venues as in they're now making it legal for them to now take up sidewalk space as like considered like seating mm-hmm. or, like yeah. guest areas now uh old town pub i just saw where they've literally converted that entire like parking lot that's had all those horizontal parking spaces that's all now seating for old town pub nice yeah, yeah so i mean the well, I mean, they t- they do technically own those spots. They do, yeah. they so. do. But I mean, I'm not saying like that they were taking away from anybody. Oh, no, you know, no, it's, it's like people are, are are now moving mountains, you know, to accommodate seating. And that also being said, I think the town is pro like events and stuff. This town lives mm-hmm. on having events. I mean, yeah, that's how yeah. we have fun around here. Man. Exactly. So I can't see us going forever without it. We just have to make the right accommodation. I got. I need to figure out a way to. Uh, reach out to places in mass, kind of like throw a bunch of lines out and see who bites, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you well, know, let's, talk, just about, let's kinda, talk about this. Oh, go ahead. Right. So if, if people are listening, when you start a show, like everything, when you have a project, you got to identify all the elements, right? So right mm-hmm. now you're working with a situation where there's some requirements in place right now, mm-hmm. and there's only a few venues that could potentially handle this, right? So you want to go through and you want to just write a list down of all the venues that would work for an outdoor space. So let's say it's outdoor, 50 seating with space around, or like however amount. You're just looking for the ones that would work, and then you can go on, and then you talk with them individually. But I would say focus on five, mm-hmm. right? And whether that be a rooftop, right? I, when I drove to Ivo Carroll's, I was like, or Baqueros. Like, I wonder if that would be it, or Old Town Pub, like it's anything, any outdoor venue that has space. Even the brewery we had a dinner. Yeah, uh, they have those kind of this a mountain tap brewery you're talking about. Oh, yeah. It has those big outdoor uh, garage doors that mm-hmm. open up, so you could have people sitting kind of like maybe like outside looking in or something like that. It's definitely possible. They're they're also getting uh, clearance to use. I don't know if you've noticed, they have all those steps, or not steps, but... Around the corner? Yeah, all those, like, that, that leaf, or not leaf, the, the grassy, steppy area. Yeah. They're getting clearance to through the city to use that coming up. Okay. I talked to Jeff Goodhand about that. So, I mean, again, like... The town, I know, is pro-events. We just... I think a biggest... the One of the biggest things is... Having someone regulate it because I know any of these business could be like, we can have a comedy event, sure. Like, you know, we could do an underground one probably somewhere. I know there's probably a business somewhere that's like, low key, let's do an underground one, but that's probably a bad idea in the sense of like, we're trying to go forward, not backwards, you know? But that I think regulation, I think, is going to be the hardest. We need someone's going to have to come regulate it. And I know we don't want. You mean like from the city? Maybe city, whether it be law, I don't know, law enforcement be touchy right now, but like to enforce the six feet, like there's no way to, I think, regulate the six feet policy, maybe. Well, no, I think that would be under the business, though. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of under the <laughs> Yeah, so I can just chop this one right off. That's uh, that's 100% responsibility of the establishment hosting the event. Yeah. And you just work closely with them. I, just from the stories you told me about building Steamboat Comedy, I would strongly advise against doing any sort of underground show, especially in a small town. Yeah. Uh, especially given current conditions. But just yeah, find it, time. and then a great way to, uh, I've, I've been thinking about this, to incentivize them to do it is, Come up with reservation blocks. You're starting to see a lot of restaurants around the nation come up with reservation blocks Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it's like on weekends, if it's a popular place, you can only go for an hour from, say, five to six. So you could potentially put on three consecutive comedy shows in one night and you can have it all in different blocks where have people make reservations and then have the venue that you're working with establish a reservation system so that that work goes on them, right? Because they're going to get the most of the money involved with the show. But right, you can figure out an arrangement just as you've done already with the 
the shows you've already established sure. where you're st- establishing some kind of ticket sales system. And But now it's just working with this new set of regulations, right? Yeah. The whole thing, whenever you're trying to produce a show, you just identify everything that you have to work with, and then you figure out how to wiggle your way in between it all. Sure. You know, I was just kind of thinking, it's a random thought. Uh, you know the parking lot next to Backdoor? That kind of big, yeah. squared off thing is. Does Backdoor own that, or is that yeah. a city lot? No, that's Backdoor. Because that sure. could be like a big space, but they'd have to block off that parking lot, right? Which, which is, you know, the difficult. Thing, I could, I could see like a a part of it, not all of it. Yeah, like, like certain, like maybe like an inner thing, and then if we advertise through the paper or something like that, they could get people out. But I, th- I think the the only downside I see with that is is like. Who wants to see comedy in a parking lot? I mean, dude, right I mean, now, that's where, where are you going to see comedy? And though? I've seen videos of uh, I just, I, people I mean, doing it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's already successful across the country, man. Yeah, it's that or nothing, basically. Yeah. Like, because like, anything indoor, like the Chief Theater, not an option. Yeah, yeah. not going to So it's got to be in an outdoor space, and parking lots work for people spread out. Our buddy, Corey David, friend of the show, I saw videos he posted of him standing <coughs> in a parking lot on, like, a... Some kind of a mini, I think it was actually on like the back of a truck with a megaphone yeah. doing comedy. Yeah. You know? People are aching for entertainment right now. Do Live, something. In-person yeah, entertainment. You know, it wasn't too long ago. I My business primarily focuses on Zoom shows. But when my friends first suggested, why don't you do Zoom shows? I said, no, I don't want to do that. Right. And it's just a matter of you have to adapt. And that's it. So you take what you can get. And you do it, and then and then you start to build it. You start to create it, and then people start to come to you and right. ask questions on how to do it, right? And you just figure it out as you go. Sure. Yeah. Well, the whole thing with going to adapting, the one thing I'm worried about is like, I don't know about you guys, but I would have to clean up my material. Yeah, if you're gonna do to it outside in spaces, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you got to yeah. do it, right? No, it's, I know. Um, but I think that's actually a good challenge to have, yeah, especially definitely. coming out of all this. Yeah, that's a great challenge because. I know I swear a lot. I know I'm kind of vulgar. It'd be great to actually write a clean set. Just write a clean set. It goes a long way, and that's where the pay is at. <laughs> right, so exactly. It's... Writing a set in these times has to be a little different, too, because you also have to change. Like you're saying, I, I for sure feel like I'm going to have to change like 85% of my jokes now. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like, Not just... For... Yeah, because all your jokes before about how much you hate black people, and that's not very popular. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> everyone knows that. You know, everyone knows that's my comedy right there, strictly. Yep. You know, not really for me, but you know. But I don't know. I'm just saying. Where you're it, from, I get it. But in, well, in general, I think <laughs> having to write jokes in these times is a little different, and having to j- write jokes in you know other times as in definitely, I think like stayed on the lighter side of comedy. You know what I mean? Sure. To, to, to hit a lot of other. You know, subjects is very, you know, I'm not going to go probably do a stand up bit on my political opinions right now. You know what no. I mean? It's, it's, it's you now either the time for it or it's not. But like, you know, me, I, I don't know, man. Like, writing jokes now is just a little bit harder, is all mm. I'm saying. I don't know. It should always be hard. Yeah. And I think that, uh, right, this is something I've heard from a lot of comics. You got to just express your point of view on whatever it is. And like, and going back to a clean set, just, don't say fuck. Don't say shit. Like you said, just replace it with darn it or well, dang. And then don't use curse words as a cr- as yeah. a crutch. It's actually comedians who can do clean sets. Most nine out of ten times are way stronger performers overall. Because then it also allows you the opportunity when you do have a show that doesn't need to be clean. And if you go in clean, you can create a huge contrast. Yeah. Like if you do your first ten minutes clean, and then you and then you drop one f bomb, it's a much more powerful f bomb. Than the fifteen before, when yeah. realistically you can just dissect someone's set, and you'd be like, none of these curse words were necessary, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the set would have been so much better. And people, frankly, are going to say this guy's an idiot because he curses every other word, right? So, and I'm gonna say not, I'm not. No, saying oh you, no, I know yeah. what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, I do say it all the time, Jerry, <laughs> but but it's also like with times like I was kind of like oh, I don't know, should I address what's going on right now? And like absolutely address what's going on because people want to talk about it. And it's just if you don't address what's going on, it's the elephant in the room. And as long as you're not doing it in a way that's like hate speech, essentially, yeah, or like yeah. picking a hard line one way or the other it can kind of turn people off as well. Like, you I can actually pick a line, but like if you're gonna pick a super hard line, have a case for it. Don't right. say just I heard this and, and have I heard a funny that. case. You for have it. a funny case for it and draw some connections yeah. that you never saw before, right? I mean, it's a, I'm just as a stupid example. You're talking about tennis. And you're going to connect it to dinosaurs, right? You like Ooh. that's that's such a strong play. Yeah. So if you have a, a, a heated topic 
come up with some wild connections that people are not going to associate like, on their own. Sure. I just did actually the the couple online mics we just did. Uh, I unveiled some kind of more political for the time things, but it was just a bit about how uh, I'm going to vote for the coronavirus to stay for four more years. That's like my election bit. And it went <laughs> over pretty well, you know, and it's like it did a good. I thought that it was good because it wasn't like taking a hard line on any actual political stance. It was more just being like, this is a topic that everyone's heated about and I'm going to take a silly stance on it. <laughs> so like now it's maybe an opportunity for that kind of things that you would normally have. Uh, you know what? Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. I, I just think I've been very, I don't know if the word is lazy or scared to really pull the trigger on whether I'm ready to talk. Scazy. Scazy maybe about. <laughs> or layered. Pull, maybe about pulling the trigger on doing like political comedy. I definitely have some, some thoughts on subjects and stuff, but it's just like, <sighs> Like especially being from the south, where I've learned to get like you know what like this isn't this isn't worth my time. Like I'm not even gonna bother like discussing this with any of you. So right. I've usually learned to just keep my mouth shut in that. But in times like this, it's just like, yeah. I mean, use this as an opportunity. You got to shoot to score. You got to try something new. Shoot to score. Well, there's a fine line, right? There's a difference between soapboxing and doing stand up. You know, it's like, mm, that's right. it. and I'm guilty it of it. Is. I've done it. I've gotten up and expressed my viewpoints. Me too. I've All of a sudden, I'm just know ranting. How I feel about mayonnaise. I've done a 10 minute bit on I've it. seen it yeah. <laughs> taking a hard line on mayonnaise taking a hard line it is the superior of all condiments it's a great condiment yes. <laughs> <laughs> mayonnaise mix it with mustard you can dip Ooh. pretty much anything in there but back to this <laughs> yeah as long as you're not ranting without a punchline or without some kind of like unique point of view then they then you're all right you know but if it's if you're just ranting and it's not going anywhere fast one, you're either you're doing one of two things for the next performer. One, you're either setting the bar so low that they could just tell one joke and they're going to smash it out of the park when it's really not even that great of a joke, but just because they're like, thank God we don't have to listen to this other just guy relief. yell yeah. anymore. <laughs> or you're going to ruin the whole show, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so. yeah, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't take some risks. Oh, absolutely take the yeah. risk and express your point of view. Just make sure you... I struggle with this all the time. It's like I got to find weird comparisons and I have yeah. to find punchlines of, you know, if I want to express my point of view, that's great. But then also make it relatable and make it understandable. And remember that most people in the audience probably have not read about what you're talking about. Or if they have, they read a headline. Yeah, and they that's it. They never read though. the depth. They didn't go into the article. And they saw a headline. And so you have to give that information. And then it becomes the game of how do you give the information in as, the as few of words as possible. Mm-hmm. Right, because you got to get everybody on the same page. Yeah, mm-hmm. few as words as possible, right there. Uh, that's the ticket. Yeah, maximizing getting your thoughts and your punchlines out in the shortest amount of time is something that I think is important. That's something we talked to about with uh, Corey the first time he was on about how he would just record his sets and like every thirty seconds without a laugh he would cut it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that seems like, I remember at the time I was like, oh my God, like that seems so harsh. But I was like, oh yeah, well, no, I get it. Like, of course, yeah. like you don't want to just be up there talking to nobody. So yeah. yeah. Never more than three sentences. So that's all I try and go by. If I'm telling a story, okay. never more than three sentences without a punchline. Sure. Or uh, like a wildly sporadic uh, connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, trying to get that, force that laugh every, or not force it, but like trying to put that laugh into it's got to be into there. A, you got to have the draw. Otherwise, it's like, oh, or it's like, my what are we doing? wandering. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Keep I wanna, everyone engaged. Yeah. I want to talk about putting on the show, guys. I think you have a unique opportunity here. I think we could make it. a show right now. And now that we are talking about it, over at Howlson Hill, like the big parking lot over by uh, the skate park and like the baseball diamond over there, nobody's ever there. Like it's a huge space that's just open and unused. Especially because no one's actually using those fields right now. I was gonna say we could probably we might just be able to use a field. Yeah, we could just we could just set up a mic at home plate and everyone can just sit in the outfield. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah, right. It's like no, there's no bad cool. idea. Yeah, it's why just not? Make sure you're working with all the parameters that are established. So there's obviously restrictions in place. Don't fuck with those. Right. right. It's like yeah. yes, you like no matter what your opinion on COVID is, whether you're over it or not. It's only going to damage you if you go against that. Sure. Right? So for any that's, of that, that's just the world we live in right now. Yeah. And that's one where, because it's uh, owned by the city, we'd probably have to reach out. And I'm not sure how much red tape would be involved or not. But it's can, worth looking into. I can look into that a little more. I mean, sure. shit, I'm wearing a 
I mean, you could Parks and Rec. I mean, you could create a community event if you're going to use a public space. Maybe you invite some local businesses to participate as well in terms oh, yeah. of catering and food, you know, food or beverage or whatever else could be incorporated. You could put, possibly set it up in reservation times, mm-hmm. right? So if you wanted to have, because you got all the performers there, you can have it come in. So if there's only, I think it's what I've seen statewide is 50 people in one spot, right? So yeah, that's what you I'm have doing. just aim for a 45 minute show. You could do two or three in a row. Sure. You could create something unique to vendors around town, which will then establish great relationships moving forward, potentially with the city as well, right? Because you're all of a sudden bringing them business opportunities that they didn't have before. Ooh, uh, that's a good one. And yeah, it's like, and definitely. you're just bringing comedy, right? You're bringing fun. Bringing something to do for people. Something to do for Seriously. people yeah. outside. You know, it's beautiful up here. Sure. Great weather lately, too, man. It's Phenomenal awesome. weather. Actually, I'd no, love it. To no, get into the too. Steamboat Botanical Gardens for sure. Like here, check that out. Like just press that. That took that little video right there, the other day, but that is like from like the center courtyard right there. There's that is a, actually a pretty good spot. It, it it's I know they can't do can't does do any justice right here. Via, is it uh, is that easy to get to? You can get there via car. There's a parking spot, and I got there via bike. I only know how to get there via bike. I know there's a parking lot. I've seen it from. You get the botanical gardens here on the bike path. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a little entrance right there. I mean, that yeah. is Gotta that's a, a pretty good wide open yeah. spot. Yeah, that's it, definitely a possibility. With the whole reservation block part of it too, what you could do is like if we had three blocks, you could have the first two that are like all ages, and then you can have a the late one be like an 18 plus. So yeah. you can switch. So we could do like two shows. You're so saying? You could, yeah, you could like switch up material and shit. Or just establish it. I mean, if you guys are don't have PG material, just establish that from the get go. Well, no, I'm saying I think we should do both though, because I think yeah. that'll make everyone focus on their writing a little more. That'll give a lot more insight to what you're saying and how you're gonna do it. Yeah, and you can do both both sets. I think. I mean, I don't. I think that's a decent idea. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's all about setting cool. setting goals for yourself and challenges, right? Because yeah. that's those are the things. Because we can speculate forever, but until you actually have something down, then that's that's when you know you got to put the pen to the paper and start writing your stuff, yeah, getting everything course. ready, and you have to be prepared, right? Yeah. You know put what I'm doing? In a situation you can't back out of. Here's what I'm gonna do right now, you guys. I really thought he was gonna fart in the mic. Ah, I should have. <laughs> Uh, for the listeners, oh, Kyle the is uh, getting up and he's adjusting his daily and weekly goal board, which uh, I am a big supporter of. That's Adding this as a bo- this is where it starts, right? You have a couple guys sitting in a oh. room, but then you got to start putting some action items together. Yeah, putting idea. Like I said, putting pen to paper. Done. Put I wrote contact together. city on the board. Yep. We're doing it. Yeah, yep. weekly goal. So that's find due by about today. Shit. It's 15. <laughs> so you got to yeah. do that uh, today. find out about Whoa. Palace of Hill, 15? and I find out about uh, the Botanical Gardens. Wow. Find out what yeah yeah what what all do we have to keep in parameters with, you know? Right. Let's do this. How do we make sure. it happen? Shoot, I, yeah, I think this could be a great idea. I just got to get in the right contact with somebody, and then once we have a space, if we get enough word of mouth, I mean, like I said, everyone's desperate to do something. Yeah, I think so, people would show, man. Yeah. I think yeah, as you contact show. people, it's all about, hey, we want you know, we, we want to do something fun, but we also want to be aware. You have to you have to over-communicate that you know what's going on, and you know there's consequences. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And so that that makes the business owners or people of the city much more comfortable working with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, because they can... And willing to do it. They can see you're serious. Oh, absolutely. They, yeah. yeah. If you put people's problems that are, like, in the front of their mind, if you show them first, you're like, I oh, got it, dude, we're good. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's showing that you're easy to work with. And yeah. I mean, you guys already have a good reputation here in the town. So, yeah, I'd say so. Just build on it, right? For sure. You know, it's, it sounds corny, but just everything's an opportunity. I mean, opportunity is what you make it. Isn't that Joe Dirt or Dex the Homo's Naked? I can't remember the quote. <laughs> the point is. <laughs> that was so is obscure. We will. You like that? A little bit of a stretch? Well, yeah. we got to just make the moves. We got to uh, put in the work and we can make opportunities. It's a good point. I think there is uh, this city and even this state. I mean, we get people from all over probably to come up for something to do. Oh, yeah. It seems like that is a uh, a thing that a lot of businesses are noticing. We've been talking with a few about doing some YouTube stuff, but they're all saying like tourists are starting to come. Yeah. yeah, already for the city. I mean, a lot of people aren't working; they got nothing to do. Well, the weather's great up here. Town's been busy. I don't know if you guys have noticed. It's crazy. But like, the, so much traffic. The traffic. I was like appalled. I was like, it's 
nothing's going on here. Why are there people here? <laughs> right? What the hell is going on? Yeah. I mean, if we do a big weekend show, we get people from all over out here to do it, especially if we have a big enough space where we get, you know, 100 plus people to all spread out. Why well, not? Well, you know, it's still, again, I don't, who knows, maybe maybe Steamboat's different, but the state of Colorado's 50 people. 50 is the number? 50 people. Okay. Right? And so just make sure. But- that's not an issue because you, you just set it up at the, the reservation system, right? You a yeah. lot of times, right? So mm-hmm. show at six, show at seven, show at eight, boom, you do three in a row. Yeah. And then you get 150 people there if that's, if it's 50, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. No, that's a good way to do it. Kind of keep cycling people in and out. Um, yeah. And obviously we just have it free to come out. People can come out from wherever, fill up the spot. I don't know what we do for money and that doesn't really matter, but yeah, I think we can make it happen. I think so. You always worry about the money last. Exactly. Right? It's uh, you got to get everybody on board, and once you get everybody on board, then you can figure the money part out. Yeah. Right. I've been a successful broke comedian for like a year now. You know, like it's how it works, right? I thought we were, I thought we were all broke. I thought yeah. that's how it. I mean, yeah. you guys get paid for this? Exactly. I was like, wait, like, I've never worried about the money. <laughs> I didn't even know that was on the table. What? <laughs> no, I think that uh, what I mean by that is that sometimes. Obviously, you need money to put things on, and shows well, need yeah. to happen. But once you come up with a good idea, or uh, you have something worthwhile, it's key not a, being worthwhile. It's worth something, right? Which makes other people more willing to give their money right. to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, heck yeah. Well, everyone listening, uh, we'll keep you posted on that, and obviously spread the word. Things are going. Things are in the works. Let's put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Heck yeah. Well, Pat, you got anything else you want to chat about? Anything you want to plug? That kind of stuff. Oh well, we could plug. Share the uh, my Instagram at Real Funny Pat. That's where I'm interviewing comedians almost every night. Uh, in my show, it's called Comedians in Quarantine Having Cocktails. We spoke a little bit about it last time when I was in Chicago. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's been going great. It's uh, incredible, right? So we have three last comic standing winners, a bunch of dry bar specialists, and other major comedians from all over. It's become a lot of fun, and that was something that you know I just started to do to pass the time when the shelter in place hit. Then I started reaching out to other comedians, and that's grown because it's helped my comedy business as well for truer laughs, for virtual shows, for private events. Because now I have access to access and relationships to higher level comedians that I had never, I've never met them in person, but now I'm actively working with them on virtual shows that that's I'm putting awesome. on yeah. that are paid gigs, which is all a result of just doing something, right? You can sure. like we just what we were talking about a few minutes ago. You can speculate, you can BS, and you can do all that, but until you actually start doing something. You know, you don't have anything to build, happens. but once you start building, then all of a sudden it builds to something, and you, you don't you won't see where it's going, but then all of a sudden there it is. You're like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so glad I put in all that work, even though at the time I wasn't sure where that work was going to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sure. I have like a general idea. and So yeah, True Laughs, T-R-E-U-E-R-L-A-U-G-H-S dot com. That's, uh, that's the old website for any virtual shows. And what else is going on? Uh, yeah, if anybody's got any nonprofits out there and they want to do a fundraiser, just uh, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at Real Funny Pat, and be happy to put one on for free. Uh, we do all kinds of nonprofit fundraisers for free for any registered five hundred one c three organizations. That is right. awesome. Yeah, like, the five hundred one c three thing, like to just specifically to charities and whatnot, nonprofit organizations. That's great. Yeah, we're, I'm excited. We're doing on Friday, we're doing one for an organization uh, that does mental health and substance abuse counseling. And we have 200 employees that we're going to do a free show. I got seven amazing comedians from around North America. We got one guy from Canada and the rest of the United States. But I'm excited. We're doing and it's all for free. So if uh, any registered 501c3s, that's uh, really important to me. Right? It's all about giving back and it's, it's it's something always comes out of it. When you do something good for someone else, you always get something in return. It's almost like oh, yeah. a selfish way of looking at generosity, but uh, just it's just fun and it feels good. And so comedy, that's the amazing thing with comedy, right? Is we'll do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a good audience, Still and am. when you have an audience full of people that are just grateful to be there, I mean, the less than average jokes are gonna crush, right? Like, oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. like jokes say, like in an open mic that. would just that's tank. For sure. <laughs> or like even jokes that in a major comedy club would just do okay at a free show, like for a good organization, they are all on board. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a bit charity cause for the comics as well. Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. That's awesome, man. It's good stuff you're doing. I watched uh, the one live stream of the uh, Comedians and Quartines having cocktails 
Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's from Nigeria, though. Oh, is that with D? We have have had two, Phage and Demajor. Is the second guy. Second, yeah. yeah. Fun episode. A little tricky on the internet connection on that yeah. one. <laughs> it's uh, we had the delay going, which is challenging. Right. That's uh, I guess that's what we get with doing one in Nigeria. Or you're but, talking uh, uh, halfway across the actual earth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put the question out there, and then you just see them stare at you. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so it's a bit. That was a shorter episode. That was a shorter episode. Yeah, it was really interesting, though. It was pretty cool. Yeah, well, you recognize this, like show producers. You know, if it's not going great, you gotta. And and he was a wonderful guest, and I was happy to have him on. It's not enough, but sometimes it's just not there, so you can cut it off early when it's not there. Sure, yeah, right? Course. You know, you'd much rather have that than something that's just. You know, droning on and on. I don't want to drone on about droning on. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Let's see. Yeah. Where are we at time wise? We're about thirty minutes. Um. Well, I don't know, anybody else got anything to add? Any questions for Pat or uh, things you want to add about Colorado versus Chicago or anything like that? I think Col- I'm good. Colorado's better. Colorado's way better. That's for <laughs> sure. Uh, it's gonna yeah. be. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. You'd you'd actually mention that you want to talk about that. That's. For me, I don't, you know, who knows what the in-person comedy is going to be like in Denver, but for me, if I can just stay in the mountains and do virtual comedy, which is something three months ago I would never have thought of uh, was even a possibility. Right. Now this has become my ultimate dream right now for yeah. the next year of sure. just doing that. And because I, I don't know, who knows what's going to happen. I've seen some open mics open up down in Denver. And I mean, I've only performed down in Denver maybe 10 or 15 times. So real, pretty unknown. Uh, which I like, right? Because I went to Chicago for four years and worked on yeah. all my stuff, so I'm coming in with a bag full of material. Jim, but I don't really care, right? I'm beyond caring what other comics think. I'm gonna. My strategy is always when things do open up, I'll find my own place to run my own shows, put on my own gigs. Jim, and, put in the work and just build it, right? That was that's all I did in Chicago, and it, and it pays off, right? Like just running a good open mic. You guys run a good open mic. You run a good open mic. You can create so much out of that. Uh, so anybody listening who's running an open mic, put some time and effort in it. Don't just use it as an opportunity to get drunk every <laughs> single time, right, with the tab that the bar gives you. It is tempting. Uh, I've been yeah. there. <laughs> oh, I've been well, hammered during uh, my own open mics. I've been absolutely smashed, but <laughs> only a few times. And uh, But you can. it's an opportunity. It is. It's sure. an opportunity if you want to quote Joe Dirt again, Kyle. That's, uh, yeah, try. Yeah. I've seen him most naked. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of this current situation of me with True Last doing virtual shows started because I had the open mic at the Irish Oak that I started. I can. Yeah. I mean, I rifled through so many comedians and evaluated and put on live shows, and I saw comedians that were reliable and could communicate well and talented. And now I have a whole roster of comedians to work with for my virtual shows. So, uh, you know, the work you can you can make of it what you want to, but that was that's all started with an open mic. Yeah, I can for sure. That's yep. uh, that's I guess that's all I'd like to plug. <laughs> uh, and I'm just uh, happy to be on here. It's third third time on the third show. Third appearance. Yeah. Wow, I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> the first three time guest. <laughs> Woo! Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> like, Pat Trick, motherfucker. You're like Alan <laughs> <laughs> Ball. Should we call it a Pat Trick? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. Sorry. Hey. So sorry. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Bring it back up! It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. All right. Well, I guess that's it. And then, um, like I said, things are going to be in the works. We're going to figure it out. Uh, we'll Let's keep you everybody done. listening and posted on the social media. And once we have something lined up, we're going to blast it out. And uh, it's going to be great. Get yeah. you guys out of your homes, you know. Terrific. Jared, Kyle, Miles, thank you so much for having me. Thank Appreciate you for being here, guys. Yeah. You guys good are amazing. You, the hospitality is incredible. Appreciate everything, and uh, sure. looking forward to hopefully participating in what you guys figure out on on the show. Heck yeah! And happy yeah. to help with whatever you like. Much appreciated. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for listening. Steamboatcomedy.com for the rest and the social media, and we'll see you next time. I'll thank you. Rain or shine, it's here to make you laugh. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast. It's the Steamboat Comedy Podcast.